If you're struggling to complete showdowns on Freelancer, then the first thing you need to do and keep in mind is when you're first selecting the contract, make sure that your favorite map is going to be in with on one of these contracts. When you're looking for something like a Paris or a New York or a Miami, something like that. And then pick whatever contract is going to be the easiest within those maps. And once you've selected your contract, leave that map till the end. That's the showdown you're going to have on that map. In this video, we're going to be showing you all the tips and tricks all to do with showdowns. So here we go. So in the background, I'm going to be seeing me complete three contracts of, the, of our new campaign as I'm going to be going over the tips in the commentary itself. So as I've pointed out at the start, uh, the number one thing I should point out, if you are struggling with showdowns, you must have to make sure that you are planning ahead. When you're picking your contracts, make sure your favorite, uh, favorite map is on that one of those contracts or making, at least making sure that it's one of the easy ones like Paris or New York or Mendoza or something like that. You don't want to be doing your syndicate showdowns on maps like Colorado, for example, because it's going to make it even more difficult for yourself. So just try and avoid the difficult maps if you can, and try and make sure you're picking your favorites. Because even though it seem, might seem obvious, but not a lot of people tend to do it. People just tend to pick whatever contract they want to play, whatever map they want to play in any order. But if you, whatever map you leave last is going to be your showdown map. So don't be playing your favorites first, and then all of a sudden you've got a syndicate showdown on Colorado because it's going to make things a lot more difficult for you. If your favorite map, however, is an alerted territory, because sometimes that's just the look of the draw once it comes later on into the campaign, you're better off trying to avoid that map, because even if it is your favorite, because if it's an alerted territory, you might as well do it on a different map, even if it's less ideal, purely because it's just less risk than doing it on alerted territory. Alerted territory comes with its all whole new problems of it in itself. Every one of your targets, every one of your syndicates, I should say, is going to be uh, an enforcer to all guard disguises. It's going to make things a little bit more tricky for you. You don't really want to deal with all of that. Everyone's hearing is turned up to 100. Everyone's sight line is turned up to 100. And, you know, everyone's senses are just, I don't know, it's a lot more difficult for you on alerted territories. So just avoid them altogether for showdowns. Don't ever do them. Don't ever do them unless it's, you know, unavoidable, you know. So that's my first two tips anyway. Next tip is going to be about making sure that you get your loadout correct for showdowns because showdowns are a whole different news new story. Some objectives can actually help you when it comes to these showdowns itself, but when I tackle showdowns, I tend to try and take many and many emetic items that I can. So you can you have overall, I think you have the emetic grenade, you have the emetic gas device, you have the emetic syringes, you have emetic pills, and emetic poison vial, you have a medic seeker one pistols, or you can even bring the collector seeker. Well done, uh, but seekers are really, really important tools to have because they're a good way of isolating your targets. Now, if you are found someone that you might think that is your syndicate showdown target, then you, you might want to isolate them. And the best way to do that is obviously a medic device. If they're in a public area, you can use a gas device. Um, if, or if you've got a seeker one, you can make, make sure that you are hidden in a well-hidden area and you can use a seeker on them and you can isolate them again i'm going to show you footage of me using these items in the footage in the background i'm going to be covering a few more important tips near the end of the video as well but yeah making sure make sure you get your loadout right you don't want to be bringing along sniper rifles unless you really do want to try and do some fancy stuff which i don't recommend and if you are trying if you are struggling with showdowns why would you go for risk i'll tend to just lean towards making sure you do these things as safe as possible Another advantage to using emetic items as well is if you find someone that's in the same network as your target, in other words, you know, they'll either be in a business meeting or a secret meeting or a handover. If you find someone that's matching the same network as you, you can actually isolate them, steal their phone and arrange a meeting in a very private area where you can lure your target to that location. So again, isolating your targets and in each of these syndicates Emetic devices are really key for these sort of situations. It's very, very handy tools to have. So try and unlock the Seeker 1 as fast as you can in uh, in Freelancer because it's highly, highly recommended. It's a very powerful tool to use. Next thing I want to say is making sure you prioritize just getting the target and don't worry about the objectives. Don't worry about the prestige objectives. Objectives don't mean a thing if it's going to increase your risk to fail a campaign. Because if you risk... If you basically fail a syndicate showdown, that's your entire campaign screwed. 
and all your objectives and all the XP or your, the money you get with those completing those objectives, they're not important at all. You want to be completing these campaigns. That's where all the main cash is going to be anyway. So when it comes to syndicate showdowns, if you've got some really difficult or tricky kind of like objectives, don't worry about them. Make sure you just take out your target and don't worry about anything else. If you've managed to take out your, t took out your target and you've still got some objectives remaining, but you feel it's a bit risky to complete those objectives, just leave. Just make sure you exit the map, bank it, take that target in the bank, and just move on until the next one. Then you can worry about your objectives in the regular contracts. You don't have to worry about them in the uh, Syndicate showdowns, unless, obviously, it's a part of the hardcore campaign, in which, in, in case, you do have to make sure you complete the prestige objectives. But any other scenario, when it comes to Syndicate showdowns, don't worry about objectives. Forget about them. Just making sure, if you are struggling with showdowns, Forget about the objectives. Just complete the just complete the objective of actually taking out the target. That's the only objective that really matters. Now people ask me all the time about uh, how do I detect assassins and how do I te detect lookouts. And I think it's relatively quite easy, really. When you use your instinct, you can see a white light, a white outline of all the NPCs around dotted around the map. Now, when you see one of your syndicates that are wandering around in purple, then you'll occasionally see. Uh, a figure that's got an even thicker a white outline than everyone else. I don't know if anyone noticed, but uh, when you highlight guards in within the in Hitman 3, or Hitman World of Assassination as it's called now, they have a thicker white outline compared to regular NPCs. And it's the same goes for assassins and uh, what they call lookouts. So if you're seeing these uh, guards, seeing these NPCs with thicker white outlines, you know that's your assassin or it's lookout. You'll know it's a lookout because they'll have and there'll be an enforcer because as you c progress through the campaign and the syndicates get more difficult when you have more potential syndicates to choose from then you'll have more lookouts to uh, look out for essentially and they'll basically be enforcers to most disguises so you just need to be look be be aware of those because if they spot you they could essentially ruin the entire run but if a network is escaping but diana doesn't say anything then you'll know that your target is not one of the people that are escaping but if she does say 47, your target's escaping, and you don't, you can't exactly point out which one it is. She'll only mention it if the target is one of those people. But honestly, if she does mention it, I would recommend just, I just call it Alt F 4 ing if they're on PC, or indeed just close your game down or turn your console off. When you reboot your game, you'll be able to replay that showdown, and you won't have to worry about what just happened. You can just restart it as if it was just a, as if you just click restart essentially. So. I don't recommend panicking the network or panicking these people, even though it is a, a I suppose it is a way of discovering who the target is, but I would not recommend it anyway. In the background, as you're seeing right now, I'm preparing for my first showdown, so these objectives aren't particularly difficult, but I'm going to go through my loadout here, and you'll notice me taking as many uh, medic items as I possibly can. So I think for this, I'll take two seekers, I'll take an emetic syringe, I'll take an emetic gas device, all of these things are going to help you in random situations depending on where the target is. I have no idea where the targets are and uh, but yeah I'm just making sure that I'm prepared for every situation. So even on to the other things as well so we have syndicates now they have two tells each syndicate is going to have two tells and you can actually detect these from, from far away sometimes you'll see a target sneeze or cough you'll see a target eat something something like that but each person will only have two tells so if one of these tells aren't a part of one of the ones that match yours, you can immediately rule them out. It's very easy to look out for from a distance. You'll have the little purple symbol above their head, and you can tell whether they've, you know, they're eating something or something, or they're reading, and it's not matching up to your tells, you can immediately rule them out. You can also easily do that with stuff like the main things that stick out. So if your target is wearing a hat, look out for any target that isn't wearing a hat, and you can immediately rule those ones out, because it's easier to rule people out than actually confirm who it is. It's best, best luck when they have like blonde hair or grey hair. It's very easy to see if someone's got dark hair so they can immediately rule them out. So from long range, you don't have to get close to them. You can immediately rule them out from long range from just from that. And if they do match your description, then you can get closer and discover what it is that you're looking for. Now, this comes leads me to the, the main tip of showdowns and what makes it all easy. Now, I do my most of my showdowns in Paris and New York. The reason, oh, oh yeah, and Miami as well, because they're just great maps for this. In Hitman 1 maps, and I'm talking about 
Paris, Sapienza, if I can remember them all, Marrakesh, Bangkok, Colorado, Hokkaido, uh, Miami, New York, Haven Island, Santa Fortuna, Mumbai, uh, Whitton Creek, Isle of Scale. If you, if you pick any of those maps as your showdown, then as you approach your actual target, you'll have an audio cue. What I mean by audio cue is once you get near a syndicate and it actually is your target, the game will actually tell you by giving you a little jingle in the background. It will just, it will, you will hear it. It's a distinct sound that is the same on every map, but just sort of slightly different pitch between, depending on which map it is. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on Hitman 3 maps. You know, like Mendoza, Dubai. It doesn't work on those maps, but it only works on Hitman 1 and 2 maps for some reason. But it is a very, very good way, and it's a 100% accurate way of telling who your target is immediately. So you could approach a bunch of uh, syndicates and roam around them one by one, hover around them, and if that audio cue doesn't play within about 10 seconds or so, you can comfortably say that's probably you're not your target, and then move on to the next person. And... Uh, I'm just going to show you a bunch of clips, audio clips here. These are the clips I've been recording from my streams. Little, several little clips to give you an idea what the audio cues sound like. So I'm going to play it back and I'm going to show you the rest of this, this showdown. I'm going to show you in action, actually in this particular showdown, without even mean, needing to roll out the red of the, of the target. So here it is. This is the sound that you need to be looking out for. I'd go for the soft parts of his thigh, or maybe try to graze him just on the neck. A nice, f like, flesh wound. I think that'd stop him. I'm gonna pretend... It's Grace. Look, I'm in a deep hole. One of my guys just jumped ship, and I need a replacement ASAP. Are you available? <laughs> All right, got to run top later. Okay, let's see. Uh... So there we go. There's a quite a huge sample of different uh, maps or different scenarios where I'm actually showcasing that audio cue. But hopefully that gets ingrained in your head. Feel free to keep playing that back. If you want to just try and remember it, the only difference is there's a little bit just variation of different pitches. It only works from Hitman 1 and Hitman 2 maps. It doesn't work in Hitman 3 maps for some reason. But again, here's it working in the background as well. This is the first shot on it. I didn't know who the target was. And luckily, it was my first target. You'll hear the audio cue right now. Watch. So there it goes. Just because I heard that audio cue, I immediately knew that was my target. So I have to work that out. So. One of my objectives here was to neutralize an assassin. There's my assassin. As I went back to earlier, I told you, it's got a thicker white outline compared to other people. It's the same thick outline that all guards have. And therefore, because he is carrying a weapon, he's classed as a guard. And lookouts will be the same. They will have a thick white outline as well. 
bit close there when I shot that dart gun, but yeah, my target's marked. I know exactly who it is, so she'll be wandering around this area for a bit. But yeah, you need to practice that yourself if you want to make sure that your music volume is at maximum. It's no other situation. You can turn all the other volumes down if you'd like. Just the music volume, that's the, that, that's the most important one. Once you hear it, it's sort of you can't really forget it. It's just always in your head. But again, it only works on Hitman 1 and Hitman 2 maps. I'm not sure why they changed it for Hitman 3. I'm not sure if even there is an audio cue for Hitman 3. I thought I figured it out one day, but then I was wrong. So <laughs> The maps I would recommend doing this mainly on is Paris, Miami, and New York. Any of the maps, it gets a bit... I don't know. There's a lot of maps I don't really tend to like for doing my showdowns on. I don't really like Sapienza because uh, the the vastness of how big Sapienza actually is. Especially when your syndicates could be wandering around anywhere, especially in the lab area. Don't want to be dealing with that lab area in Sapienza. But you can also do this in Haven Island, but again, because it's quite a large map, it's if they wander around the mansion area, it comes a little bit tricky again. So I tend to just stick with New York, Miami or Paris, because you can get good disguises for those maps, and you can get quite close to these targets too hear that uh, audio cue quite clearly. The maps that I would actually avoid for these Syndicate showdowns overall was, would be Colorado, Bangkok, Marrakesh, Santa Fortuna, Isle of Scale, uh, even Chongqing and Ambrose Island. I just don't like those maps for showdowns. They're doubly worse, even triply worse if they were actually alerted territories. I'm just not a big fan of those maps at all. I would, I would definitely avoid those ones. Just stick to the ones that you know. Stick to the good ones in Hitman 1 and Hitman 2 maps, so you can definitely get that audio cue, so you can figure out your uh, targets straight away. So yeah, that's that's pretty much all the tips I have for you. Any questions that you have that you're still struggling struggling with for these showdowns, leave a comment in the, the uh, video down below, and I'll try my best to answer them, or pop into one of my live streams every now and then and ask your questions in there, because I'm always free to answer the questions, whatever you have. But yeah, hopefully these tips helped you out overall. I'm just going to let the rest of this play out. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. You can watch the uh, credits at the end. If you became a member last month or you became a new Patreon, your name should be showing in the credits there at the end as well. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this video helped you out. Drop a like on the video if it did. Subscribe if you wanted to the channel. And hit the bell icon and select all notifications if you want to get all notifications for the videos and live streams. You can even follow me on Twitter. I'll post all my... Uh, videos on Twitter there as well, so you can guarantee to get your notification for all the videos and live streams. Consider supporting me on Patreon, or even becoming a member yourself, by just clicking the join button below next to the subscribe button, or click the link in the description, and it will take you straight through the whole process of it. Thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you in the next video. Cheers. Well done, 47. This will make anyone think twice before turning to a life of crime.